Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is January 7th, 2022, new year here, and we're here again with Evaristo Roman for part seven of his oral history. And Evaristo will be talking about a variety of things today, but we're gonna go back with him to his time in, in Puerto Rico um, as, as an adolescent. I mean, there's some things that he wants to talk about um, during that period of his life first. So go ahead, Evaristo, whenever you're ready. <coughs> uh, I was remembering some things because I, you know, my life has been a gambit of experiences. Sure. Downs and ups. Um, and I remember in Puerto Rico, my father, I don't know if I mentioned this, I, I was in Catholic school in PR, so I had to learn how to read and write. Yeah. On there on a sixth or seventh grade level in one year. Wow. And I did. Yeah. Um, when I first got to Puerto Rico, um, my father always told me he was gonna bring me to PR because when I was like seven years old, I think, he showed me a lot of money and he says he's going to Puerto Rico and he will send for me. Yeah. You know? And uh, he did, but that's because my mother sent me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because my mother found a lot of smoke on top of the of my closet, <laughs> you know. Um, did I ever mention that about the, the time that I, oh, that pillow that was cursed? No, I don't think so. No. Okay, let me start before I go to that part. All right. Uh, my, my, there, I, there was a pillow that my mother had, that they had given my mother. Yeah. My mother was doing well, well off. She tried to do things that a man should be doing. Yeah. And then she didn't let us know. Like she needs to lend money. She needs to get into business people. Because my mother is too generous. Her name is Generosa. And that sure. means generosity. You she know? Lived up to and too, she huh? lived up to Everybody lives up to their name. Yeah. Uh, in numerology, if you find out. You know, you you read and you will find the number of your name, and if you read on the number of your name, you're gonna see that that is you. Yeah. If you combine that with your ascending sign and your sun sign, you're gonna find out that they say the same thing. Mm. So astrology and numerology go together, sure. like a glove. But not people know that. Not many people know that you live your name. Um, like my last name is my my first number is eight for Evaristo, which means a leadership. Um, sage, yeah. uh, uh, per counseling person, and I've been that all my life, you know, and my family name is eight, the number is eight, Roman is eight, and that is public work, mm. um, religious work, um, things that, that uh, is to benefit the society, but in a more spiritual way. Okay, sure, yeah. You know, and those things I've been, uh, and I am, I'm still am, you know. Uh, because people on Facebook come to me all the time. I'm telling you, I got a list of people that I've, I'm counseling. Yeah. You know? Um, so, um, anyway, that's here. That there was this pillow that they gave her that I was just so attracted to. Yeah. And no matter who, excuse me, because I could hear her talking. Yeah. Ariela said, escucha. Um, so, um, there was, my mother used to be really close with a lady in the next building, and they got a picture of me when I was like seven years old, because the guy was a photographer of me with a hat on and, and with a cigarette in my mouth and a beer can. <laughs> I wish I would get home with that picture, my <laughs> God. They already had, like, they, they already knew. Yeah. Uh, you know, but somehow she gave my mother a few things, and one of them was that pillow. Right when she was leaving to PR. Yeah. Because um, her, her daughter was a fine piece of work. Um, Come and see that. Yeah, I think that was the name. Mm. So, um, so what happened was, even my sisters, when I came in from dancing or whatever, I used to go to that pillow and grab it. Yeah. Right? And take it out of anybody that had it. Yeah. Because that was my pillow. One day, my sister and my mother was like cleaning the house. And my mother kept sweeping towards that pillow. Yeah. And they said, 
Uh, he, she told my sister, open it, because she thought I had a pair of works in there. Oh. You know, I was hiding a pair of yeah. works in there. And it wasn't like that at all. My sister said, no, I'm not messing with that pillow. Yeah. That's his favorite pillow. I'm not messing with it. And my mother said, open it, open it. So, you know, they opened it, yeah. and they found a stick about that long, a ribbon, and the wing of a bird. Oh, okay, yeah. That year, my sister got pregnant. That year, I really went downhill with drugs. Yeah. You know? Um, so, and one time I was playing the timbales in my house, and my mother got a quarter or something, she had to hit the floor and everything. There was a man out there floor called Gallego. Mm. And he, he it looked like he was into the African thing. Because all Puerto Ricans are into the African sure. thing. Uh, spirituality and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because the slaves in Puerto Rico. Every Puerto Rican has something of uh, uh, of African in their house. Absolutely. Basically with their little azabaches. Yeah. When the baby's born, that's to keep bad spirits away. Sure. Or... Again, paintings or something. We all, because we are, our bloodline is African American, yeah. Indian, uh, and Spanish, and Jewish. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people don't recognize the Jewish part, but we are. We have a bloodline of, like Benji. Absolutely, like Benji, yeah. Yeah, and Whiskovich, one of the guys that used to be with the Gamble Brothers all oh, the time. Oh, I haven't heard his name before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whiskovich. Mm. Uh, I think he was a cop or something, but okay. he used to always walk around with Benji, because we allowed anybody in our headquarters because we didn't hide anything. Yeah, yeah. Because we wasn't about, you know, sure. anything bad. On, and whatever, whenever we made those decisions, they were away from everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so, everything went downhill after that, you know? Wow. But again, I want to just know that because I want I don't want to forget it later on. Yeah, do you, you know. Do you think your neighbor put it in the pillow or? Uh, well, maybe somebody her? gave it to her and she passed it on. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because she was a really attractive woman. She had a great body, like her daughter, and you know, and Miguelito, her son, was one of my best friends. Yeah. You know, and I used to be out there because I used to like a little girl named Mary McCross. But then she liked the other brother. She liked Miguelito, and this shit, you know. But it, it, I, I just uh, feast my mind on, on those big sisters because she was really good, really nice. Yeah. A nice girl. And and back in old school, when we were younger, everything was more romantic. Females were more adult yeah. than now. Yeah. And they acted like adults. They knew yeah. how to cook. They knew how to clean. They knew how to they dress good. And and, and I guess the... the all the songs were very romantic back in the day. For sure. Um, they all had a message, not like today, you know. Um, I would just listen to some now. Yeah. You know, every song had a message. And now you, you uh, one line is the whole song. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still love music, you know. Um, in any event, you know, I was sent to Puerto Rico because along with that cleaning uh, one time, I said when I was about twelve, I went to I went to Puerto Rico in the end of, in the in the summer of, of I believe it was sixty seven. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I remember a dance in the Hunts Boy Palace, right? That I had a breakup with a girlfriend of mine. That's I right. didn't know how to break up with her because, and then I found out she was pregnant. That's right. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. She didn't tell me. And you didn't find out for... I didn't find out until I came back. Yeah. You know? She was 19. She was a model. Well-dressed all the time. And I think my kids look like my son because my Sonia, the mother of my kids, had the same complexion. Yeah. You know? Beautiful hair. Beautiful woman. The same Spaniard. Yeah. Uh, her mother was from Spain, and my grandfather was from Spain, so, you know, my kids have that, like me, light skin. Yeah. And more blonde like me, and now they turn into their brown. Um, I have a 
picture of my daughter when she was young. You could see she's like brown. Her hair was like uh, a blonde. From, I don't know what kind of blonde that is. But like me, I was that color and it just changed over the years. Yeah. And anyway, I was sent to Puerto Rico and I got there and my father used to, was a supervisor in a, a, in a Trigo Master Mix, which mm -hmm. was by the docks. Because my father was always into, he, gra he graduated from a Marine Time High School yeah. in Manhattan. Right, um, he used to drive trucks here. I guess he started. He was a supervisor over there because he spoke English. He had a high school diploma, and that in Puerto Rico was big at the time. Sure. So, in any event, I, 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 I went to play. I left public school with a bunch of trophies and a bunch of medals. Yeah, you told me about that, some of those. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had my jersey on. And I have, I pinned two medals here. Yeah. Two basketball medals. Because that's all I went, at the end of the year, that's all I went up to the stage for was to collect sports stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then a year everybody gets an award. All the awards I ever got was for sports. Sure. You know? Um, so, and I started getting that on third grade when they started having the presidential medals. Yeah. Always got gold, silver. You know, in any event, uh, fast forward again to Puerto Rico. Um, I went to the to well, they call the projects here is a Puerto Rico is a caserio. Okay, sure. But it's only two stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And I went because I wanted to play. I wanted you know, and I looked and I ran to I, I, I seen these kids playing basketball, and I just sat to watch them play. Yeah. So they, they, the mother called one from the house, because basically all the houses you could see the court. Yeah. And they all and and and, and, and the cell phone those days was, you know, <laughs> you know, and they would run in, gay. So they called him and his name was Chueta. You know, Puerto Rico would give each other crazy names. <laughs> you know, me they used to call me American. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, um, so. And that came from the youth house. My father put me in for no reason. Um, mm. In any event, you know, he went, so they needed one guy. Yeah. So the guy, they see me there and said, you want, like, you want to play? Well, I went, I don't know what. But I didn't understand even what that meant. Yeah, sure. But I went, and, and, and Jovertito, you know, knew English. Yeah. And Junior, his brother, knew some English. Yeah. So they helped me out, you know. So everybody, I took off my shirt and they seen the jersey. They said, oh, <laughs> and then I I started under my legs, you know, back dribbling, layups, jump shot, and they didn't see, you know, they just straight up, but they didn't know <laughs> organized basketball. They had no clue about. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and that got me a long play, a long way in Puerto Rico because yeah. the older guys always picked me to play. Yeah. You know, but then that's when I started my my learning my Spanish words. You know, sure. he he needs to help me. I couldn't say from one borough to another. Yeah. You know, they don't go another al otro. You know, um, so because they were asking me, quick, they were interested about New York, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 for sure. For and sure. and and that way, so my father had some female friends, of course. Yeah. That's where I got all my. Anyway, I got my dressing. For my father, cause my father dressed pretty slick, mm. like my grandfather. Yeah. My grandfather killed himself, and he has my name. Mm. But he always dressed sharper than, like me. Wow. You know, um, he always had his his nice straw hat, yeah. his nice suit, his cane, according to what they told me. Yeah. You know, and that's what my mother also loved about me that I was sharper than two edged blade. They even told Naomi that. My friend, you know, I still have, like, that guy called. Yeah. We're from the Friday's Projects. We go back to the 70s. Wow. You know, and we always do things together because there's a few of us still alive. Yeah. Uh, we, I was just talking to Eladio, which is another old school friend of mine. Yeah. So we always do things together. Now they're a little reluctant to invite me because I can't eat like they do. Oh, okay, okay. You understand? Yeah. So I'm okay with that, but they still need to see me sometimes and they invite me and I, yeah. I take my stuff, you know? Um. So, you know, that's the way I started learning the area. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. And then I was in baseball, forget it. Oh, for sure, for sure. I you know, know that. Yeah. We used to have teams, right? I remember we went to play. There's a place called Cabaja Terra in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. That's by the Bacardi, and that's by Punta Salina Beach. Okay, okay. Right, that's where the money was at, people that live with the money. Yeah. There was this guy named Bonilla. Mm. He was a blonde hair kid, blue eyes or green eyes, whatever it was. He was supposed to be the star of everything because they have real nice uniforms, you know. And uh, we had iron-ons, man, yeah. all wrinkled and everything, you know. Yeah. And we went over there. And we start playing them, and I started to do my thing. I started uh, stealing the ball. I started laying up. I doing jump shot, and I, I'm the smallest one. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but still, you know, I played here in all my high, in all my school teams. Yeah. So I played everything, you know. So I play organized baseball. I mean, baseball and 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 basketball. And basketball. So I I, I knew. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I'm, and I was extremely fast because I ran track here. Yeah. And, and and I got my medal. I got a bronze medal because I slipped back mm -hmm. there in Pelham Bay in the track. Oh, they had sure, little sure. pebbles. They oh, didn't have oh, carpet yeah. like they have now. Yeah. So when I went to get set, remember the coaches didn't teach too much, you know? Yeah. But then I set, and when I went to, so fast that I slipped, mm -hmm. then I got up and just jetted, it. And I still came in still, third. Still got a bronze, yeah. I still got a bronze, you know. Um, and then I didn't have nobody to take me to the big game, never to yeah. nah, you know what I mean? I, I didn't have that structure. Yeah. You know, remember, I'm, I've been my own man since I was five. For sure. You know, uh, and and they would now, now the fans were telling me and calling me viejito, which means old, that, you know, and, and trying to tell me names, and the coach took me aside. And he said, listen, don't ask her, because all they want to do is get you out the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, all they want to do is for you to answer back and get you out the game. Yeah. So I didn't fall to that, but we bust them up. Wow. We went there with our wrinkled uniform, T-shirts, that's all we had. We didn't yeah. have no, 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 no shorts like they did, all coordinated and uniform. Yeah. And we, all we had, whatever shirt we had, and the shirt. Yeah. That said, Amelia. Yeah. And the number. Right? And I remember. So that also happened in the Little Leagues. Same kind of thing, huh? I had to take my birth certificate to every game. Yeah. Because they said, you are able to have two guys that will be 13 before the end of the year. Then the rest have to be under 12. Right? Mm. I was hitting the ball out. Yeah. Remember, I had technique. You know, it's something that came to me from playing in the streets. Yeah, 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 yeah. The quickness came from me from playing stoop ball, you know, and all that quick games because we played in hallways. Yeah. And that's a little spot. And then I played stick ball. Oh, yeah, for sure. And stick ball, they always had me in third base because I'm, I'm little, so, or first base, you know? Yeah. So I had to cat, focus on the bounces and whoo, bare yeah. hand, you know? Uh, um. So it it came easy over there. Yeah. You understand? It came easy. Um so they had me play in the league. I remember I went to Fire Hills and I played every other position and my God it was still still I bat lefty and still boom. Yeah. You know, 'cause I'm a switch hitter. You know, I learned that here playing state ball, pitching yeah. in. 'Cause we play here in the city you play games that that make you good. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you all the oh, muscle training and everything, everything because the minute I picked up a paddle, I was good. Yeah. For the first time. Yeah. Because I played good handball. Yeah. All I had to do was make sure I had to stay level the the the, the paddle because mm -hmm. I had to um, hold it with one finger then until I learned how to just let it loose, even with two fingers, uh, bang uh, it, you know, meet the yeah. boy. And, uh, I played in. in, in, in uh, in Archie Beach, of course. Yeah. And one of my friends is Omar, one of my best friends, Omar. Yeah, he was a ghetto brother, too. Yeah. In Claremont. And one time we were on the on the side talking, and I, and I said, oh, I need to play baseball. You know, this and that. He said, really? He said, no wonder. He said, because they call me Ernie, remember that? Yeah. He said, Ernie, because when you hit the ball, you could hear the 
contact. Huh. You know, you can hear it. It's loud. Pow. Yeah. Just like in baseball, I hit it out. Am I the strongest? Not. But Maybe pound for pound. Yeah. But the technique makes me put it out the park. Because I don't put the power from the back. I put the power when I meet the ball. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all watching the ball come in and then just meeting it and then driving it. Yeah. Like a golf club, you drive it. Yeah. You know, and that's how you put the power. You know, and the same thing with paddle ball. You know, you meet the ball and then you pow. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he was saying, wow, now I get it. You know, yeah. why you have so much power, you know? And I'm sure guy, but I have more power than all those big guys. Yeah. You know? Um, anyway, in PR, I started playing for Puerto Rican cement. Mm. You know, and that's Pony League. Sure. Now it's Pony League that I'm playing. That's 13 to 16. Yeah. Right? And I was coming out of the papers. You know, everybody knew more or less who I was. The big guys always played. I mean, the the guys that went from 116th Street, the white guys from here to gamble in Puerto Rico and softball, yeah. they always used to pick me. My pa, my father used to play, but I used to be playing shortstop. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I was a third baseman until I got to Puerto Rico. And my father became shortstop. Ah. Uh, I mean, he became, he, he became, became third, third base, base I became, became shortstop because I got a good arm. Ah, uh, okay. Even okay, though sure. sometimes I felt that ball was going to fall off the air. Yeah. Because when you get it deep and short and you throw it to the face, remember, you throw it to a glove. Yeah. And that ball has to be the same speed. So then that ball is going to go like this. Yeah. Because it didn't get there. It's a long throw. Yeah. And at the same level. You know? And, and, and uh, they will choose me. I, they never told me it was for money. I'm sure they picked, gave my father. Yeah. But my father didn't give me anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the biggest heartaches is when I was a Boy Scout. And I, you know, in the Boy Scouts, we were learning how to play the steel drums. Okay, yeah. You know, ding, 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 ding. I still remember the words, you know? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Anyway, <laughs> and then, dang, dang, da, dang, da, dang, da, dang, 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 Yeah, I remember that. It's those, you know, Caribbean. Yeah, And the yeah, big yeah. one is... With, you have the bigger balls because it's a stick with a rubber. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with rubber because you can't hit it with a flat with a stick. Yeah. So then the, 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 we had the bigger balls for the big drums. It's all cut and then you boom, 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 <laughs> boom. You know what I mean? So anyway, I, I, I you know, I, I always been underneath a good person. Yeah. You know, uh, I just got caught in bad situations, you know. For sure. I guess... Uh, you know, and I used to march. The Boy Scouts always march. You know, Boy Body or what? What that means? You know? Yeah. Uh, like, like a Body is like uh, 110th Street. The sure, Barrio sure. Is, that's a Body or a yeah. sector. You know? And I didn't have a uniform. Yeah. You know? And then finally, I got one. I think because all the time, I I believe my mother was sending me money. Mm, and he, and he, never gave he was taking it, yeah. My father had an alcoholic problem, you know. Mm. And even though he made great money because he was a supervisor. Yeah. But anyway, um, and I used to get a hit behind that because I used to have to wake up at 4 in the morning, go to the docks, and when the ships came in, yeah, and, and raise my hand to get a job so the guy could come out, he picks you. But I had to do the work of a man. Yeah. And yeah. I was only 12 years old. Yeah, wow. You know, and I, I I had an $8 bike that I put together that he gave me for my birthday. I know my mother sent me more than $8. Yeah. You know? But anyway, I brought one wheel here, one wheel there, the body there with $1, one, you know. And I put up, I put a bike together, and that was my bike. Yeah. And I, then I had a shoe shine box, because I spoke English. And I know how to shine shoes. My cousin, I learned from my cousins, Walter and Ralph. Yeah. But they used to go and shine shoes on Freeman and around Soundview. Sure. You know, and, and then I remember they got robbed at Soundview one mm. time. 
they put them in the bar and they took their money after they shined. Oh, wow. You know, because I used to live in Freeman when my grandmother was raising me, you know, yeah. at the time. And she passed away. You know that story. Yeah, I do. You know, um, so, you know, it, it, it's like I had to do the work of the man. And I didn't have a sandwich or anything, so, but the older guy, somebody always gave me half a sandwich or something. Yeah. Until I got paid 16 or 18 dollars, I think. Yeah. Eight hours, right? That's my sixteen. Yeah, and, and then I will go to uh, Plaza de America, right there, mm. by 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 the army base, and by um, um, uh, 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 it's, close, it's a street going into Santos, anyway. Okay. You know, and, and going to uh, Guay, uh, Guaynabo. You know, and, and these are towns in Puerto Rico. Sure. And it was the first English big department store around the area. And they had a big slide where they mm. sent 10 cents, you get a coolie like that, which is like a flow, okay. high flow. Yeah, yeah. I used to buy that, and I used to give me garlic bread. Oh, yeah. I love garlic bread, a nice yeah. slice like that for 10 cents. Yeah. And I would eat that, and then I would go shoot. Yeah. Because there in that area, all the guys from the army base used to live. Sure. And you know, they were going. Then when I spoke English, they started letting, oh, you want to come to my house and do a family shoot? Yeah. So I was making my little money like that. You know, I'm not a thief, like I said. Maybe I took things in my house when I was early in life. Yeah. But I knew they would forgive me, you know. Sure. Um, in the street, I never did a robbery. I never did anything like that. I'm yeah. not for that. I always sold drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and not big weight. Because one time I was I was got in, got involved in a situation when believe it or not I worked as a bouncer in in a, a sublime mm. right um, Hawaiian Dave was the owner and I knew him from from Paddleboard Courts and we just and I helped him and I'm on the, I told him listen since we have to search everybody by hand let's get downtown and get a metal detector yeah yeah you know we just search everybody. So I started letting the guys come in. Well, you know, the guy at the big willies, yeah. with one bouncer, with shit. You know, and he didn't know that. Yeah. David didn't know that. You know, and we were the first in the Bronx to have uh, male strippers. Oh, really? Okay, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. cause I remember. Because uh, we were an after hour club. Yeah. We started late, around 10 o'clock. You know, and then we went up to 6, 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I worked the door. You know, remember, because I always had a nice physique with the sure, little guy. Sure. Even my friend told me that. He said, you know, you're short, but you're built. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember one time, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, you know, this guy came from, because there was Emil's, was down on University, mm. or the other side of the park. Yeah. We were on Fordham by Miriam, I think it is. And right off the church, the next block. Sure, sure. You know, and across from the park. And they came and they wanted to talk to Dave, but they had this big bounce. He was one of his big bounces, his bodyguard. And we had a gate like this. When you came in the door, there was, okay, let's say you're coming in this way, right? Um, there were, You pay over here, but yeah. only after I search you. Sure. Right? And then I knock on the door and then they let you in, but then we had a bigger guy in the, right behind uh. the door. Then the bar was there. And on this side, you had a little fence, um, uh, iron fence, with table, you know. Yeah. And we had more tables. We had an area in the back, which was a dance room. We had a little stairs on the side where the DJ room, and behind the DJ room was a little area for VIPs, like I would say. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, You know, yeah, yeah. people that want to sniff on a quiet look. All of that, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, um... This guy, he came in, and I don't know what happened. And then, you know, bouncer, you can't do shit. So he tried to throw me. Oh. So what I did was, I grabbed onto the fence, right here on his leg, I pinned him. Yeah. And he, st he kept trying. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> yeah. He couldn't do it. So the girl in the court, in the court room, which I had slept with the night before, and we gave her a job in the court room. Yeah. She came out, she seen it, and she went, ah. So then David started coming, so we let me down. I just laughed in his face. Yeah. As big as you are, you couldn't throw me. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Couldn't throw me. Yeah. But any, in any event, and I got that from Puerto Rico. Because when I got to Puerto Rico, 
you know, I didn't eat healthy here, yeah. you know. A lot of cancer was so, you know, my mother was extremely busy. She sure. worked. Sure. We were never on welfare. Yeah. You know, we were never on welfare. Yeah. You know. Um, so, so anyway, I, 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 for the baseball, the baseball, then after that, I started playing in the stadium for Catano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were paying two dollars, I think, to see the game okay. in the stadium. So now I'm playing minor leagues in the baseball, or Triple A, whatever it was. Yeah, it was the best thing in the town because that's the team that the town had. Sure. You know, and I was coming out in the papers. You know, my grandfather kept all the clippings. I'm sure that my stepmother. One of the reasons I left Puerto Rico yeah. was uh, my stepmother. That's right. I remember you talking about her. You know, yeah. she used to curse about my mother. Yeah. And I didn't accept that. Yeah. And she was pregnant, yeah. you know. And one day she said, because my mother was a hope. And I said, no, 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 no. My mother doesn't drink or smoke. My father found you in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's the hope? Yeah. And she ran after me. Yeah. And... She fell. Mm, yeah. You know, and my father knew what my hand. There goes another beating. Yeah. You know, my father used to hit me. Anybody would bring a complaint to the house, he would hit me and then ask me. Yeah. I didn't answer him because what? You already gave me the beating. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I never did with my kids. Yeah. You know, I always let him explain things to me. Absolutely. I didn't make no decision. Just like he put me in the youth house. Without asking me a damn thing. I know. Just assume the worst about you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, uh, be, uh, uh, in, in in the youth house, right, I was pissed as a motherfucker when I got there. Yeah. You know? And there was another guy that spoke English, too. You know, we, we got along pretty good, this tall guy. You know? And um, there was this guy that he tried me. You know, first of all, they started calling me American because of the sports. Again, whenever we got the little time to play basketball, they seen how I play. Yeah. Then the softball, they seen how I play. Yeah. You know, and, and um, they uh, so this guy grabbed my my hand and I, I grabbed his. Yeah. He grabbed mine again. I grabbed his. Yeah. He yeah. went to grab mine again. I popped him. Yeah. Yeah. And then he everybody. The, all the negative guys around him, around him, oh, why he instigating? Yeah. And the decent guys were behind me. Yeah. You know, and the guards used to hit you with a stick. Mm. If you did anything wrong, I didn't want to get hit with those sticks. Yeah. So I just kept, you know, hey, you know, you know, let's cut this bullshit, or right? just let it go, bye bye. And 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 he wanted to keep on. I was dying to bust him up. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I looked at the guy and Mr. Torre, I never forget his name, Mr. Torre. He went like this. Uh huh, yeah. Shook his head. Yeah. So I knew if I turned around, he was going to grab me. Yeah. So the minute he did that, I went, pow! Yeah. You know? And then he didn't know how to fight. Yeah. I, I came out of my New York style, pow! <laughs> grabbing him and, and hooking <laughs> him. And, and then he just kept charging me. So I noticed that. So I just dropped down. And gave him a monkey flip. You know? Yeah. He hit the wall flat. He came down like, whoa. And like I, I just walked up to him and I seen his head. And I measured it and I went, pow! I broke his head and I broke my arm. Yeah. Touch right here. Oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So now I have a cast. Yeah. We both to the hospital. <laughs> his name was Bambiro. Bambino. So, your back, that's called cool, a back. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, now I got a cast. Now, they don't fuck with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you got because a on your they, they knew I knew yeah. how to fight, first of all. I wasn't no punk. Yeah. And then, you know, and this guy even came on my picture for my birthday. <laughs> he came out of the picture. Because <laughs> I still had the same clothes that I brought from New York. Yeah. When I left. Puerto Rico. My father didn't buy me a damn thing. Mm. You know? And, and, and um, may he rest in peace, but that's the truth. Yeah. You know? And, and with that cast, I play baseball still. Yeah. You know? 
And um, so, um, I, and I was hitting it out, and there was this guy named Julian. Mm. Right? He was big. And he couldn't hit it out. He used to get frustrated. He said, but by the that little guy hits it out. Like, and I get that all the time, yeah. anyway. Yeah. You know, just like that shot I hit in, 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 um, in the schoolyard when we used to play for the Sacedos. Yeah. Nobody put it over the fence for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and um, I remember, you know, and they, and I will just, you know, like, again, technique. Yeah. The most, because remember, the food they will give you, I started getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know? I got getting big. They call it a boiler, mm. which means the rice and beans. Even though sometimes you see little worms in the rice and all that, you have to eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and they, and I didn't escape. They do take me out to sweep in the front and everything. Yeah. Right. And I didn't escape because before that, people made a little hole in the top area, and they all started dreading. Okay, yeah. I didn't have nowhere to go where I'm going to run to. Yeah, to your father who'd send you right or back? Send me right back? Yeah. No, man. You know, or get lost in Puerto Rico somewhere. Yeah. I one time was going to take a job just to work in the farms in New Jersey to then escape the farm and come back to New York. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wasn't was going to do that. I looked into that. Wow. I needed my father's consent. He wasn't mm. giving it to me. You know? <clears throat> I remember that then they said we then used to on the visits, right? They used to sneak in cigarettes. Okay. Yeah. There was one guy that used to go out giving every now and then he would get somebody's cigarettes. He gave me one. But they were locks. Oh I didn't okay. want that. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm used to speaking uh, smoking cool. Yeah. From New York. They didn't have Newports. Yeah. At that time Newports wasn't around. You know? And and, and um so I was sweeping, and I sweep, and you know, they 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 leave me alone and everything. But they knew I wasn't going nowhere. Yeah. I was in a, a good classes. They knew I was smart. But I would run across the street to buy. They had cigarettes that come four in a pack or five little packs like that cigarettes. Mm. Right. Yeah. I remember how much it was. Uh, five cents, not even that, I guess, because the whole pack was ten cents. Yeah. So it was a few cents for that, you know. But when, with two or three cents, you know, you brought candy, you brought a lot of good things. Yeah. You know, the money was right. Anyway, um, there, they really released me, right? Yeah. And one day I get up, and I was there about maybe two months. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know? My birthday month and everything, because they took pictures of me. My father went to visit me, go to cake. And the same guy that I beat the shit out of. And that's why you see me with a cast. Yeah. So, huh. You know? Um, the same guy I beat up, he was on the line to, you know, take the picture. Uh, and, and and I wake up and I see the, the little Jeep from the youth house there. And I said, oh, shit, what did I do? So they come in and everything, and they talk to my father, and they said, could we take him to the championship game? Yeah. In Guaynabo. Yeah. And I said, okay, so they, my father said, okay, you're going to feed him, bring him back, everything. I said, yeah. So they needed me for that last game. Yeah. You know, but I, I thought I was going back, but <laughs> I wasn't going back. I didn't do anything. Well, yeah. I always did something, but you know. Because <laughs> it got to the point that I had a loose jaw. Mm. Because my father used to hit me with his fist. My father never used the belt. Damn. He pow like a man. Yeah. You know? After a while, I just was immune to it. Yeah. You know? But I, that's why I had that surgery when I came back. Mm -hmm. And I went to Woodburn. I came out of Woodburn. I was really big. Yeah. And I went to the old Lincoln. There were, every doctor that seen me from, from dental, oh, you know you need this surgery. Oh, you know. So I keep hearing that. And I said, if I'm going to do it, let me do it now that I'm really... Yeah. They wired my mouth shut and all that, and they handcuffed me to the bed because my jaw went down here. They didn't want me to see myself Ooh. to freak out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember the girl, one of the girls that went to see me was 
What was her name? She, she was the girl that had a kid from one of the immortals, and I didn't know about it. Oh, okay. I, I see. didn't know that she had. She was with an immortal. Yeah. Because I met her in Taft High School. Yeah. You know? Because all the schools used to get together and go to one school and hang out. Yeah. And at that time, we were having we were hanging out in Taft. I met her there, Cindy. Cindy, okay. She was a fox, man. Nice, nice, beautiful hair, got black, but she had thighs. Yeah. To die for. <laughs> and her sister was, that we call La Cahueta, mm. but we call she was the one that, that let her go. To, we used to go to a house in Queens, right? Yeah. She would take the condola with, so her sister would stay with, with Crystal. That was a baby's name, Crystal. Yeah. And we would have leave us in the room and doing our thing yeah. the whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I kept seeing her back and forth, you know, every now and then. Because I took her to the 310, I showed her on, and I took her to the DJ room in the rock room, took her to the DJ room in the Latin room. Yeah. I showed her that we were in charge of that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I know the gangs came later, many people say, oh, we ran that place, but that's bullshit. We ran that place yeah. first. Yeah, and then the gangs came later. Joe Asset, my soda, myself, Robbie, because that was a... There were only one turntable and one turntable. They were just turning one song after after the other and two different turntables. Yeah. It was it was Robert that came with a mixer. He knew how to mix. Wow. And that's when we got the mixer in, right? And that was a dancers club. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sadly, um, Tommy Cueva got killed. They say it was a gang member, but other people say no. It was a robbery though. Yeah. You know. Because the minute the gangs came in, I was already over the gangs. Yeah, Except yeah. for this one time, this guy ran up on me. I remember we brought a pound of smoke, and because he had money, you know, he had that, and he was, I seen him in a, when I was a state, I was a lifeguard already, state life, in the old YMCA, and I, I had access to everything. So there was this program in Hunts Point, right? Yeah. That was a youth program that they would come to use the center mm. and use the track and use the pool. But I had to open the pool for them. Yeah. And I remember I used to bring music and I used to put on the songs while they were singing. The first time I did that, they jumped out the water. Wow, man. <laughs> music while we're in the pool. You know, and I would play my four walls. Yeah. You know, and everything like that. You know, um... Anyway, uh, that let's get let's get back to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, okay, yeah. So in Puerto Rico, before the ending, that's when I was playing baseball, which yeah. I would have probably been drafted. Somebody else probably would have taken charge of me. Yeah, I would have been taught technique, more technique. But they didn't teach technique. Everything that I learned came naturally. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. now they teach everything, and it's carpet. So it's like playing on ground, and you can cut, you can count every bounce. Yeah. In Puerto Rico, you there was holes in the ground and everything because there were horses that they would take in there, yeah. sneak in there and just ride around. So you can look at the ball and then all of a sudden take a funny bounce, yeah. and you have to be fast to grab it. Yeah. You know, now in a carpet you see every bounce, you time it and Absolutely. you catch it. You know, it becomes easier. Yeah. Like a stick ball, I learned with those. Fast line drives and grounders that would come at you, how to time it and boom. Yeah. You know, so that's what the ghetto teaches you. You know. Yeah. So I took the, all that, all those techniques to Puerto Rico. Absolutely. You know, and and and, and, and it taught me, you know, and, and I got a lot of notoriety because the big boys would pick me to play. And now, and I oh I told you about those females, right? You did. And my yeah. father told me. And they weren't supposed to look after me, so they had a girl named Ani. She was like a, a, a nice, nice girl, man. A dark skin, nice eyes, tight butt, everything. She was like old and like, she was seeing one of the older guys, 17. So the guys would goof on her and they say, ah, I stole a girlfriend. Yeah. Because we were going to the house, so I would kiss, I would be with her, and my boy, uh, Bachi, would be with the, the sister, Tata. Yeah. You know? And we were just, but I liked Nana, and Nana was the one that used to walk by and all the guys. 
and I was laid back. I don't, I don't know how to see me. <laughs> but one time we were playing in Puerto Rican cement, and I was covering third base, and I went to get the guy out like that, and I put my leg, and the camera guy came in with the spikes, boom, right into mm. me. And the sisters, because her brother was not that, he was tall, and he, they would come to see the game, so they ran to me, you know, yeah. and he was the first one. And then we were dancing because I knew how to dance, you know. When I got there, yeah, already Sasta, yeah, you know. So uh, we would see each other in the, in the dancing. So she told me, "Look, wait in the corner. If you go into that dance, we'll give you a ride." Yeah. So I kind of liked her right off the bat because I knew she liked her before. She was taller than me, um, you know. Um, so, um, we would go, so her sister would sing to me, because I'm wondering, you know, she, wow, she, you know, we haven't hooked it up yet, but we were dance partners, she yeah. wanted to get jealous, but another girl took me out to dance. Yeah. But she was, he, uh, there's a song, I see, uh, by the LeBron brothers, Como Chate, Mi Hermano, mm. you know, everything will come to you. Yeah. You know, and I didn't put it together, but it was, she was telling me, just be calm. Yeah. You know, she likes you, she's with you. And it wasn't until I was going to go to, my father was going to send me back. Yeah. That we went to a Rio Piedra, that we went to a house party. And, you know, we, we took a walk in the moonlight. And in VR, the moonlight was the light sometimes. Yeah. Right? And the houses had bushes and everything. All you had to find was a little spot in between the bushes, and that was you. Yeah. We talked, and I had to tell her, I'm going. My father's sending me to be up. I must turn me back to New York. Yeah, back to New York. And this girl cried. She said, she said, no, 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 no. And she grabbed me, and you, I felt the warm tears. Yeah. They came from the soul. Yeah. And she said, I'm going to find you. I'm going to, I'll, 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 we'll meet again. Don't worry. And you did. And we did. <laughs> yeah. And we did. That's a crazy story. You know? And the shit is that, uh, um, that we could have had a good life to her, but she was good for me. She wanted me to be a, a physical ed teacher. Mm, yeah. You know, because she knows me about my sport. She knew me, she said, boy, Yeah. You know, and by that time I was a lifeguard too. You know, um, so anyway, um, I used to go in PR, if, the public, you can play for 10 cents, you get a ride in a car, a public car, mm. like taxis. Yeah. But they go from one place to another. Okay, I see. That's yeah. their route. Yeah. You know? And the buses there were just, ugh. Yeah. They're really old school. You know? And then, um, so, if you were stuck somewhere at a certain time, you wasn't getting a ride home. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. You know, so I used to go to a condado to hang out and all mm. that. Because they had McDonald's there for the first time and all that shit. And I used to get stuck, so I would sleep on the beach. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the, and I'm sure the guards seen me. They would come with flashlight, but they didn't tell me anything. You know, yeah. They seen I was a kid. Yeah. You know. Um, and my father would say, the doors here close <clears throat> at 8 o'clock. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. And if I, I would come home later than 8 o'clock. Yeah. And then, when we lived in, in Amelia, you know, there was, we had a little maca in the back and all that shit. So I, my grandfather always would, my favorite, yeah. he would open the back door for me. I would get you in, yeah. Always, you know. But when we moved to the other, to we moved to Las Vegas. Mm. Uh, that's by Bayamon, just before Bayamon. It was a new, new area that was sure. under construction still. We got from the first house in now, but our house was behind a cemetery. Yeah. You know? And my father put me to work like a man. I remember there's guys that cut the grass, right? And I yeah. had some change, I put it together, I gave it to them so I can go play. Yeah. He didn't want it like that. He wanted me to flip the soil. And for the first time, that's when I got calluses in my arm, just Yeah. It's hard you work. Know? And, um, you know, hey, but he gave me that work ethic, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, which I always have, you know, because I worked in the stores, you know, I always helped out, you know. Yeah. And uh, here in the stores, I, my boy Pete, we would come and buy something, I would give him more change. Yeah. 
You know, we would split the difference, I'll say. <laughs> Always go for an angle, you know what I mean? But in any event, you know, um, I would have to stay wherever I was at. Yeah. You know, and I used to be ashamed because all my shoes, the flap of my shoes broke. Yeah. And I would still have to wear those shoes. He didn't buy me a pair of shoes. Yeah. You know, so when the incident of the, oh, I didn't finish with the, with the, with the Boy Scout suit. Oh, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. And you used to march, and I didn't, I was the only one without a uniform. Yeah. And I used to march, because I was in the cherry platoon. That means we march, and we okay. do things, you know, we sure. do little, little moves, you know, quarter turn, half turn, and yeah. all that shit, and then march in between each other and all that. I didn't have a uniform, and we were marching. So I had to swallow my pride a lot. Yeah. You know? And my father was known for having a good job. Yeah. But he was also known for drinking in Savannah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He used to have me eat in a restaurant for lunch. and I, he, But he told him, don't give him no hamburgers. Wow. Only rice and beans and that. Yeah. No potatoes for him. He yeah. Food. But every now and then she would slip me a hamburger. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and, you know, I'm a growing child, man. You know? And, and um, those times that I, I, I slept, I would say, how the hell am I going to get back? Because in PR, you would be able to hitchhike a lot. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. You know? And and that's the way I got back home. You know? Sure. And when I would get home late, I would sleep in the porch. Yeah. And when he would wake up, you see me there. And, you know, the night I'll get him. You know? And it was, you know, that's the way it was. It's just that he tried. Oh, I went with that tattoo I had. Yeah. I got beat up for a month. Oh, really? Yeah. Anytime he saw he was smack the shit out of me. Wow. You know, but hey, you know what I mean? I was, I was raised, I finished myself. Yeah. You know? That's one of the things that my, my rich brother said when he, when uh, he saw me. He says, look, man, it must have been hard on you. You know what I mean? But yeah. you, you survived. Yeah. You survived the ghetto. Yeah. You know, you survived it, man. Yeah. You know? He was half white, so you know what I mean? The Lucas. So he got along. He became mafioso and okay. he had his money. You know what I'm saying? See. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I didn't have that privilege. Maybe no. if, I, if his father would have taken me in, maybe I would have. Yeah. I still would have been. Because I, I had my my rich aunt, Teresa, yeah. that wanted to adopt me. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. You know? And I would have been well off, you know? Yeah. But I was getting hundreds in school. Yeah. I was still throwing apples to my cousins so we can have stealing <laughs> apples and throwing it to them. You know? Yeah. That's that little things. I never stole nothing. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's kids then. You know, like when yeah. I came back from Puerto Rico, they put me in eight sixteen. Mm. And I was getting hundreds and they were saying, Why am I throwing chairs out the window? Yeah. I was bored, man. Yeah. Yeah. See one reality was like I think I mentioned before. That Dick and Jane shit didn't work for people in the ghetto. Yeah, I know, I know. See Spot Run didn't work. All of that stuff, yeah. We would see robbers run, yeah. ambulance run, police cars sirens. Yeah. It wasn't until when I was in, in, in a therapeutic cassette uh, that the classes were small. Holly Mines took the time to see what was wrong with me. She knew I was smart. Yeah. She gave me those books, Voices from the Bottom. Yeah. And I yeah. really got into it. Yeah. They were about the ghetto. Absolutely, yeah. So my comprehension, my comprehension got better. Everything got better, you know, and I, I was interested. Yeah. You know? I love PR. I love PR. That was a great experience for me, man. I, I love it. I was an altar boy. Yeah. I was in Catholic school. I had to be. I hated it. And that came in handy when you were at Woodburn later. Yeah, it did. It came yeah. in very handy. But you know what I used to do? Because I was so mad. You know, when he raises, I'm supposed to ring the bell. I used to ring when I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> That's funny. So he throw me out. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he would. <laughs> he knew what I was doing. He didn't let me off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I want to play baseball. I want to be out there. <laughs> Let's rush this along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to go, mm, and then he would look at me. And everybody had to say the prayer after I rang the bell. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, man. You know, I enjoyed Puerto Rico. I, I, I mean, it, when I worked with the horses, cause, you know, because I was in Catholic school, two other sisters, 
their mother was a parole officer. Yeah. She got my case. So they needed two guys that spoke English to work in the army base. Yeah. And it went it was me and Mike, you know, from Levy Town. He was a good looking kid, mm -hmm. man. So all the girls basically were after me. But I had the ones I needed to be after me. Yeah. You know? Because uh, he was too looking, too good looking, so he was only gonna love himself. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the, the song Dizzy came out the other day, and, and, and I was reminded how the guys used to like me dance, huh. see me dance, you know? Cause I used to do that Tom Jones move. And, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, with my, with my hip, and then they used to like it. You know, and I got the horses, I used to ride, and I had, a moment in PR where I was on top of a mountain and I was seeing the bay. Yeah. And I didn't have a shirt on that day. I was high because I would get up and just take my horse for it, right? Yeah. You know, there were two that I had, Crobet and Nino. Yeah. Right? And I'm telling you, I swore I was there before. Mm, one of those moments, yeah. I swore I was there before. Yeah. And the reason I'm okay with my size is because of the Taino Indians. Absolutely, absolutely. They were about my size. Yeah. And they were athletic like me. They were into a lot of things like I am. So when I started learning about our culture, yeah. I was okay with my size. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Because the real true Indians, even the, the Aztecs and the Mayas, were by my size anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I know, yeah. Uh, so... You know, it's like, I had that moment, man. I, I was there, I was there, I was there. Yeah. You know, which makes me think about reincarnation and all that stuff. Because Socrates says, we're immortal. Yeah. If we're immortal, we should know all things. Yeah. It's a matter of being asked the right question. Yeah. Because he went to Mano and he took a 12-year-old child, slave boy, that never went to school. Yeah. Right? And he told me, he, told, he started asking that kid question. He started drawing boxes in the dirt. He yeah. says, what's that? He said, square. Yeah. He said, another box. Square. He said, are they equal? Yes, they are. He drew another square. He started doing these figures, and before you know it, he had that kid doing algebra. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You understand? So, he says also in the Catholic faith, which, even though I went to Catholic school, yeah, I know too much about their dirt. Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially after the Inquisition. Yeah. You know, um, you might wonder, damn, this guy from the ghetto knows all this shit, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, it, 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 he proved a point, he says, so if we're immortal, we should know all things. Yeah. Because remember, uh, spirituality is all about immortality. Yeah. You know? And, and, and uh, I always take that and, uh, you know, and run with it. Anyway, the first day I got back from Puerto Rico, I went around the old neighborhood and I got, the, they got me high. Yeah. I got hired, yeah. many I got off the plane. Yeah. You know? Because in PR, when I used to do it, it was really good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, pure. I seen it nice and pasty. I said, oh, what's this? But they had it in school paper, and I didn't trust that. I'm used to seeing mm -hmm. the little glass eating bags. Yeah. But I knew how to make works. They yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, let's get a go there. Let's get a Let's get a... a, 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 a and, and we just get a rubber band tied up tight. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And yeah. I started showing them. <laughs> you know, so we just get high, we just get oh man. In the army base, I used to go out to La Pella. Cause remember, I'm a young kid, 12, 13 years old now. Yeah. You know? Um, and I started buying. Yeah. I was a kid, the cop didn't think of me of anything. I just walked right through. For sure. But yeah. I had my shit. And I would take it back to the army base. Yeah and give the guys I wanted. Yeah. And make me some extra money. You know, um, the writing club was good. I enjoyed it. I, I loved those 
bonfires that we used to do and the horses, putting them in the water, letting them, grabbing by the tail and they would, they would just take off through, you know. And then it was the, the, the youth, we used to do that. A young girl taught me how to ride. I couldn't even get oh, on wow. a horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't get on a horse. She said, no, this is how you do it. And she taught me. And I remember the first time I came back from riding bareback. Yeah. I went in the shower. I turned it on. It was about 10 in the morning. And I screamed <laughs> louder than, oh my God, my ass. When that water hit You're my so butt, raw, huh? it was so raw. And I heard him say, I said, now he's a rider. <laughs> <laughs> But I was telling, I was telling, uh, that I only yesterday. I was saying, we used to do the the battles, the rescue, and all that because I seen some of them on on, on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We yeah. were looking at the horses, and I was trying to show how my eyes looked like, and everything. You know, the best time of my life was in Puerto Rico. The dancing mm. was awesome. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, the food was great. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why I, I, I didn't eat candy much. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah. You know, however, when I started working, when I used to have my heavy meals, I always liked to have a Hershey bar after I eat. Yeah. I used to buy the whole thing. Okay, yeah. And I have it in my drawer and Lottie Pops and whatever I wanted after one. But then the kids would be crying and I would go, hey, how you doing? Because you can't hold a kid down for more than an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would go get him, bring him come to my office, yeah. Here's a candy. Yeah. So one of the, one of the the the, the fiscal girl, she seen that. And she said, "You buy that out of your own pocket." I said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, "Bring me the receipt next time." Okay. Yeah. She started paying me back. I was getting things that my director wasn't getting. Yeah. He said, "Shit," because one time we went to a meeting downtown. I said, "Let's put it in the, in the garage." He said, "No, no, because they don't pay for it." I said, "Yes, they do." Yeah. <laughs> Give me the receipt. <laughs> You know, when he gave it to me, I went. I got his money back. Okay, yeah. And he says, he says, what the? F they don't do that for me. <laughs> yeah. But I was favored because actually I knew more than everybody else. Yeah. I was well trained. When yeah. it comes to HIV, I have taken all the trainings. Yeah. Not only that, I put him on the map. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, I became a voting member for the Bronx Cat Network, which sure. is now the Call the Advocacy Group. With uh, Socrates Cava. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you know him. I, I haven't, haven't met him. Yeah, we used to, our main, our main meetings used to be in the, in the main hospital, mm. in the auditorium. Yeah. That's where 180 um, uh, um, agencies yeah. would get together we'd and together. we would pass information out and I would network. Yeah. So that's why I was so valuable where I was at and I was getting more money than everybody else. Yeah. $5,000 less than the director. Wow. And then, and after that, it only came to two thousand because wow. they get not even that one thousand because I was getting forty four five, mm. so um, he was getting forty five. Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? And, and the senior was only getting thirty seven. Yeah. So I didn't care about titles. Yeah. I know that for they. Sure. I know that they made me leadership coordinator, and out, outreach coordinator. You yeah. know, and and um, that's it. When I started working in. And substance use within the few months I was there to be close to my mother, I was already acting assistant director. Yeah. But I told him, put that on, on writing because I don't want nobody that says, who the hell am I? I just got here. Yeah. You got, because when Nancy wasn't there and they made her assistant director, she used to leave me in charge. Because mm. the minute I was doing my assessment, she would look at my assessment and say, wow, man, you write. Your flow to the writing is great. Yeah. Seems like you've been doing this forever. I'm learning. That's why I'm asking you questions. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, and, and, and one of the girls that work where I work, that she, they, the, 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 the director that came in, the hateful director that came yeah. in. Yeah. And she only got the job because she knew the guy. She knew Jack about mm. HIV. You know? Um, but we needed a director. I didn't have my master's, so I couldn't get it. Yeah. You know? Albany is really on that when it comes to to that. So any in any event, you know, um uh, gee I just lost my thought. Um in any event, um I for example, you know we would donate for that, but what you donate for is like not Red Cross but something else. 
uh, United something. Oh, know. United Way or something, something like, like yeah, that. They yeah. yeah, they sent me a letter. Yeah. They sent me a letter because um, now they they sent me a letter saying that I can join um, something they had because they had a warehouse around Brooklyn Boulevard all the way up there. Oh, okay. They said you pay four hundred dollars and you can come shopping every month. Oh. For anything you need, you know, you know, uh, uh, um, handbags, uh, yeah. uh, any tools that you need, anything like that. Um, so I had a, a a room like this full of things for the crimes. Wow. Because remember, I had Gilead signs, all the pharmaceuticals on me. Yeah. And they would give me things, and I would put them in there, and especially for World AIDS Day. That I always held an event. Yeah. You know. It started with Rico, but then I had the juice. Yeah, yeah. I had the, I had the, I had the people, I had the connections, I had all the other agencies, and black. When they do the those health fair, they had to call me in from vacation to run it, uh -huh. because I was the one that was going to invite it, right? You know, Beth, 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 Beth Abraham. Oh yeah, right. Abraham, yeah. Uh, uh, Ryan Nana. Um, all all the other agencies here and programs that wanted to advertise and, and put, you know, and have their tent there. Yeah. You know? We were charging like um, $30 for the tent and that's it. You know? Yeah. For the space. And I would get a delicioso coquito that would give me three barrels. Wow. Of coquitos I could give the kid. I had uh, um, Fresco's Pizza on San okay. Anne's. Right, that they just opened up, but they got along with me. So I would say, no, they, they want to always take me to lunch. You yeah. know how they do the pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so I used yeah, to yeah. go there. So he didn't try, He never used to charge me, Andre the boy, yeah. the owner. He has a brother, but he's, his brother's a cheapskate. <laughs> but he didn't charge me, never. You know, and I had the money there. Yeah. How, you know, so I would order pizza and bring me up a couple of pies. Yeah. So my money, he just would take it off the list, you know. And at the end, I st when I left for the other job, I still had money there. So I said, every night, I said, you guys be okay this week. I'm going to pizza for everybody. I did things yeah. there, clothes for everybody. Yeah. Things that nobody else did. Yeah. You know? And, and that was it. That's that's just who I am. You know? Um, and unfortunately, I ended up not too good there with them because, and I'm glad because what I heard is they had a, they were, that thing was, I mean, they were, that program is so filthy, the director's over. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's. I want, uh, they came and they asked, "Why you got so many maintenance people for two floors?" Yeah, yeah. Because they all have people. Wow. Mm. Irene's people, you mm. know, and her son was one. Of, well, I can't. Let me not talk about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because they have a uh, 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 like a, uh, 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 a building for females with kids that use drugs. Yeah. And they have to do the program. Just like they have the building for the guys that come from Puerto Rico that are HIV positive. Sure. You know, and you have to program and, and get all the drugs and do everything, you know. Yeah. And of course, they send the difficult ones to me because they said, I remember they made a bet that this guy, his name, he was he was a, a Muslim and Puerto Rican. Kadad. Uh, Kadad mm -hmm. was his last name. And they say he ain't gonna last two weeks for everybody. And the guys were saying, "Oh, yeah, yeah." You know? <laughs> but he grew. He he finished the program. Wow. You know, because when I spoke, I speak out of projection. I I'm not gonna talk about anything I haven't been through. Yeah. And they knew that. And when I spoke in groups, they knew that. When I talked about breaking, I haven't in a in a cell, you know, and hitting the floor and throwing up and all that. They knew I knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm the one they listened to. They didn't listen to no book smart guy that never went to, through those things. Yeah. Especially you got these murderers that they've been through hell. Yeah. yeah. They've been in jail. The one that did 24 years and came out, when he came out, they didn't have no metal guards. They didn't have no, no, no uh, cell phone. Yeah. And I said, and when he came out, he got, they put him in a place, and he got with a girl that gave him HIV. Wow. This guy was madder than hell. Yeah. How was I going to control this guy? I got him finally some anger management. And anywhere he see me, he thanks me. Yeah. I got a lot of people like that. Wherever they oh, see I'm me, sure. they thank me, man. You know, 
Um, just like I got a lot of girl brothers that know I was vice president, and when they see me, they they appreciate me. Yeah. You understand? Because they knew what I was doing. Anyway, leaving Puerto Rico, I left after that, and my, my father finally sent me, because I used to beg him to send me back to my mother. Yeah. You know, after that incident, that where she fell, that's when he decided to send me back. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I remember looking back in the airport, my father was crying. Yeah. He was crying. You know? But he preferred, he chose the vagina over me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, all the experiences with uh, other girls that came and my aunt had to put her foot down because they treated me like Cinderella. Yeah, I had to yeah. clean. I had to do everything, and two girls there looking pretty. Yeah, nah. you know what I mean. So I left Puerto Rico because of that. Had I stayed in Puerto Rico, I could have probably been a different person. Yeah, you know, um, I came back to the ghetto life, and I got lost. Yeah, you know, uh, I became a ghetto brother immediately because when I seen that the ghetto brother, all I did was walk in. Yeah. You know, they know me. I knew Benji before the girl brothers. I knew his family, his brothers before the girl. Yeah. We accepted them into the block. Yeah. I was the one that first called everybody else to look at them. Say. Yeah. I noticed them first. Yeah. Right on the corner, you showed me. Yeah. 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 You know, and 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 so, you know, Charlie, I knew from Forest. Yeah. From Tintin, you know, um, so you know. Because everybody was taking karate at that time. I was taking the keto and karate. Mm. You know, we we brought our swords from 42nd Street. Oh, wow. The wood ones. Yeah. You know, we would practice with David was teaching us. Mm. I had my skirt and everything. I thought I was hot shit, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they didn't have to uh, 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 spend much of my, of my skirt because I'm a short guy. <laughs> you know, but anyway, the thing is that had I seen Puerto Rico, I think I would have been a professional baseball player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. Um, and I would have found my way because eventually I would. Yeah, I always found, my, I always found my way. You know, cause the 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 drugs, even though they're rapid as they were. Yeah. You know, there's not the way it were here. It was here. Yeah. And to an extent, it is, if you live in certain areas. You know. Yeah. But now exactly where we moved to. And I was still going back and walking every day to my old, old friends. Yeah, yeah. You know? I remember for the first time I took a trip. It was in Puerto Rico, Sunshine. Mm. Cause we went to buy smoke. This guy, I was coming out of the army base and this guy stopped me and said, you know where I can get smoke? And I said, oh, maybe in a condado. Yeah. He said, that's where I'm going. And they didn't have it, they had some fresh sunshine that came from New York. Mm. So he brought a tap, and I and he gave me a piece, and I took that, and I said, "Oh, this shit don't do nothing." But we went to Rio Piedra and to see, cause he was supposed to pick up his his uh, sister. Yeah. And of course, he wanted to. Anyway, we, I, we waited in the back area, and I sat down, and the air conditioner was on top on this side, and I started hearing the noise, and I'm looking at the air conditioner. Now little music notes are coming out like that. <laughs> now little birds are coming out like that. And I said, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. And I said, let me, I need some air. Let's go. He said, okay, wait outside. Now wait outside and the trees are changing colors. And the birds are flying and coming wow. from one bird to another. Boom. I said, oh shit. It was dangerous. Cause that stood with me three days. Wow. And I know I went home. Time. I went home. That's the first time my father helped me. Wow. You know, cause I went to the back in my mind. I took a shower and everything. Cause when I went to take the shower, I seen nothing but colors come out. Wow. You know, so you know, when I got into the bed, we had the moquitero, which you call to keep the bugs away, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. And I went in there. And I said, I seen spiders coming from the corner. I seen all this. Oh shit. no. And I go and I knock on my father's door, bah, you know, you know, bah, you know. And he says, go take a shower. Yeah. 
and go to bed. I said, but I took a shower. Yeah. He said, you're fully dressed. Said, oh, shit. <laughs> so I went out, knocked on his door again a while later. I yeah. So then he called a cop. Uh, you know? Yeah. In the morning. And they came. And they said, he looked at me and he said, Alguien te dio algo? I said, yeah. I mean, you know, yo pedí una soda. Yeah. Bush. Yeah. I said, yo pedí una soda. And my night, he was hanging out there. He said, ah, que me dieron algo. You know, like they put something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know. And they said, and that's the first time he helped me. He said, give him, give him coffee, give him this, give him that. First time he helped me. So I went outside. Now, my boy's sitting down. They're talking, right? And I look into my boy's shirt. And all I see is Captain America and everything coming out of the middle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I said, oh, shit. And they just said, let's go to Condado. Some of the guys, they, they want to buy some shirts and that. Yeah. So we have to take... A ferry to get to San Juan mm. from where I live. Yeah. Because we know for the ferry. Yeah. My area, Catania. Now, I had to hold my friend. I said, hold me, hold me. I was afraid I was going to jump over. Yeah, yeah. Now, when we got there, right, just the way I got home, the way I got home, because he left me a little distance. I'm walking home. I'm looking for the sign, and I have to put my head, my head on the pole. Yeah. But I will see too many signs. Yeah. You know? And then, when we got to San Juan, I seen too many shirts. I seen too So they were laughing, and I was about to attack them for laughing. Yeah. But I held myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I held myself when we got back home, and it finally went away until about six months later that when we moved to La Pega, I'm sitting by the baseball field and I smoke a joint. Yeah. And I'm hearing the song Spinning Wheel on the radio. First, I walked in the park. As I'm walking, I'm seeing blocks of snow in different colors. Huh. So I'm walking like this, and the guy said, why are you walking like that? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's snow. Yeah, you tell me wrong with you, and I finally told them what happened. So now they looked out for me. Yeah, you know. But that six months later, I'm seeing spinning wheel, and I started seeing the wheels in color. It, it came back. Wow. Six months later. Wow. Just for smoking the joint, I was seeing what goes up. Wow. Must come down spinning wheel. That's uh, Chicago, I think. Yeah. You know, that's crazy, man. I survived so many. Did it? Did it come back anymore? No. Ever again? That was it, huh? I was saying that was it for. All the guys in New York, they were, they were doing the THC. I did take the little THC. Yeah, the, yeah. Night, I, the night I was with, I, I finally met the mother of my kids. Yeah. I finally not met, but I was I gave up on her. Yeah. And the guy came out. It was October 12th. It was Mousy's birthday. Mm. You know, and, 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 and I've been rapping to her for, her sister introduced me to her. Yeah. Her sister looked Italian, but she was a bitch. I mean, she was, she used to crack off. She used to joke. I used to love her, man. Yeah. Sagittarius like me. Yeah. But we didn't have love of her. Me and her used to fight all the time once we became family. You know, and mm -hmm. her boyfriend said, well, I'm going to take you both up the road. You can kill each other. Because <laughs> he wasn't going against me because yeah. he knew how he was. I, I, I beat the shit out of her like a man. Like she, she, was, she used to fight with men. Yeah. He didn't fight with men. <clears throat> he didn't give a fuck. <clears throat> she used to get down. You know, because the girls from the old school used to get down. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the girls now, too. You know, and, and and I didn't do, I did not do sunshine or heat like everybody else and all that shit. Yeah. And I say all that shit, even though my one of my best friends is Joe Acid. Yeah. In the three ten, he used to be the one selling the acid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I one of us used to sell the heroin, one used to sell the smoke. I used to sell the smoke and pills. You know what I mean? Um. Cause oh that's what I forgot to tell you I was getting value when I was eleven and twelve years old really and I was getting two and all some second all wow you know from uh, uh, this Korean doctor on Prosperity asked off yeah now my mother used to go to him I used to go to 
Yeah, I need to sell them. Yeah. Make my money, but I need to take them too. Yeah. You know? And I remember that one time that I took one and I did heroin on top of it. That, I don't know how I'm alive. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, that's some se a serious And then I was drinking some yeah. blackberry brandy and the street off of 149th Street to the next block I was going to the store. And all I did was hit the floor. Wow. And nobody helped me. Wow. And I tried to get up like that and pow, like that. It mm. took me about three hours to walk that little area. Wow. To get to wow. You know, it, you know, it's like somebody's been praying for me for the longest and that, that angel is my grandmother that died. Yeah. And then my other grandmother. Because when my mother went to Puerto Rico and my grandmother was dying, she told me that her, that her grandmother had died in bed, told her not to worry about me, mm -hmm. that I was going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Before she died. Wow. You know? And it came true. It did, yeah. You know? And I'm glad it came true at the period when my mother needed me the most. Yeah. You know? I had a dream with my mother the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. I told her I told her yesterday. Yesterday, it was yesterday night. Uh, I mean, we're in the room. I, the room's over here. The couch over here. The living room here. The kitchen over there. The door over here. And I'm, I'm getting out, and I see this girl. She reminds me of one of my younger girls. I was younger. Yeah. So I know I just, like, oh, like, you, what are you doing here? Real nice. Thin girl. Yeah. You know? Nice short hair. And I grab her, and she's like, Man, she like charming me, and I just when we start kissing, and I went to put my hand on her, on her butt like that. Yeah. And she said, "Wait, man!" She pulls up the skirt so I can touch her butt. Really yeah. Good. <laughs> so I'm walking towards the couch, skinny, so we can start to do something. And then my mother comes out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Screw everything. Yeah. 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 Because we're kissing, and then. My mother comes out, and my back is towards towards the girl, and the girl sees my mother and like gives that little smile, you know what I mean? <laughs> like we caught, you know? <laughs> and then I, I realized it was a dream I woke up, <laughs> you know? Wow. But then today, I'm thinking about that girl. Yeah. She's been in my mind all day. Yeah. I could have had my way with that girl, but she was younger than me. Yeah. She was a gorgeous girl i seen her grow up since age five or something else I, I think since she was born yeah her sisters always hung out in my house with my sisters yeah she always but ever since she was a little girl that girl was always used to stare at me always used to stare. i think she liked me like like also sister like the other one that told me you're gonna be my boyfriend when i grow up <laughs> and she sure enough got me yeah she's the one that disappeared i told you that oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah and we don't, we had never heard about her again. Mm. You know? Um, well, it's time, for, man. Oh, uh, I, yeah. I had no idea. Wow. You know, I don't want to keep you. Okay, we'll end for today then.